So, am I autistic? And now that's a question a lot of people may come across. Here are five common traits that you should know if you think you're on the autism spectrum. All that coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you wanna get involved with the Think Differently movement and be a part of this team, then all you have to do to learn more is click that notification bell down below to subscribe to this channel. And if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a like and a follow to see more videos just like this one every single week without fail, because you guys are awesome. Okay guys, so what is going on? Welcome back to the Aspie world where we think differently daily. What's up, different thinkers? Hope you guys having a great day. Um, I just am so stoked I'm making videos today and, and I wanted to get videos out for a while for you guys because you're awesome and, and I love you. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, maybe it doesn't sound. Maybe you needed to hear that today. Anyway, regardless guys, if you want to get your hands on my free PDF book, head over to the download uh, in the card above here, the description down below, and on the end slate. Also guys, if you haven't already, go check me out on Instagram and Twitter. I love following the new people. All right, boom, let's get on with it. So autism, or the autism spectrum disorder, is a condition which is characterized by a, um, a neurological behavior or personal behavior traits that are characterized within people. Now, there are approximately one in 100 people in the United Kingdom uh, diagnosed with autism and one in 60 in the United States diagnosed with autism. Now, that is a lot of people. It is on the rise because the way of diagnosing it is becoming more and more streamlined and people are becoming more aware that there are females on the spectrum who've been misdiagnosed, which is a terrible thing that's happened over the years that no one's properly diagnosed the females, which it really annoys me. I've done a bunch of videos on that, so if you head over to my YouTube channel, check a playlist on girls and autism, there's, there's a bunch of videos there for you. But in terms of this video, I wanted to kind of go over five of the most common traits that you'd see, or five of the most common autism traits that you'd see in yourself if you believe that you potentially could be autistic. Like, some people could stumble across information on autism and think, oh my goodness, is, is that me? Do I relate to that? And so in this video, right now, I'm going to just go over five of the most common ones that you could align yourself with, and uh, that'll be super interesting. Right, so, the first one I'm going to talk about is lack of eye contact. Now, people on the autism spectrum actually have a, an intense difficulty with maintaining and creating eye contact with somebody when they're talking. A lot of autistic people will kind of look down when you're talking to them. Um, I, for one, have a huge issue looking people in the eye and talking to them, especially like anybody, and even with my parents and family members, it's really difficult to make eye contact because there's an uncomfortable feeling that comes along with this that makes it almost impossible for you to enjoy making eye contact, which makes it really personal and you have to kind of look away really quickly. Now, people on the autism spectrum um, aren't, don't do this exclusively. I know there's a bunch of other people who probably don't like looking people in the eyes, you know, people with extreme anxiety or other kind of, you know, neurological and mental health conditions. But people with autism uh, tend to not like or tend to not or tend to have a difficulty with making eye contact. Um, but it's not it's not the it's not in everybody in autism, but it's majority. I'd say it's like 90% of people with an autism spectrum disorder. So don't worry if this one doesn't take the box. Okay, so number two is difficulty socializing. Um, you know, people with autism uh, have a huge difficulty socializing and creating social communication through social interaction. This comes from the fact that autism is a communication disorder, a communication issue, which actually imposes on people's ability to understand social confirmation and uh, social uh, gestures and things like that. And it all stems from the fact that when a person on the autism spectrum is growing up and learning all about life and you know trying to see the world around them and take all that in, what happens in a neurotypical sense, a person who is not autistic, is that they just take the world as it is and they, they kind of bubble along with it and then the things that they start to learn and pick up are these social norms or social um, conformities where people will do certain things or gestures and they know how far to stand away from someone and they know when it's their turn to talk and all this stuff that these unwritten social rules that you just pick up from being in a social environment. Um, they pick those up. Whereas people on the autism spectrum are having a difficult time reading the signals all around them from the world and taking all that in, and that is their main focus, that the, the socializing and the social um, uh, things, the social norms are just pushed to the side because they're, they're less important to survival than the actual world around them. And so this causes an issue with difficulty with socializing and being social. Okay, so number three, really interesting one, is hyper-focus. Now people uh, with autism will be uh, able to hyper-focus on something like a specific thing that could be looked at as them zoning out of reality. You know, they could be like, whoa, check out this thing in my hand. But then people might be like, you know, 
hey, Dan's zoning out, you know, he's Dan, Dan, they like, talk to me and I'm like, oh, whoa, look at this thing in my hand and getting proper involved with it. But then they're like, Dan, you know, Dan, what's going on, man? He's zoned out of the world, ah, but it's not zoning out, it's actually zoning in. And this is definitely having a hyper-focus, which is fascinating because hyper-focus helps you develop certain skills. Like I, um, I'm able to hyper-focus when I'm learning stuff in a, in a video format or a visual-based format, which enables me to learn new things, which is super cool, right? I mean, like, why wouldn't that be a cool thing? Okay, so number four is lengthy talking on a subject. Right, so a person with an autism spectrum disorder may really love a certain subject, and because of that subject that they're really into, they can talk at length. They could literally talk at you for an hour straight about the subject. I remember once I was doing a um, presentation on the 9-11 terror attacks in America, which I found um, just, you know, really interesting because it was like a puzzle trying to figure out what on earth happened and, you know, it was such a tragedy and there's so many pieces to it. I just love to learn about it, you know, and, and understand it as morbid as that may sound, but you know, I did a presentation on it, and the presentation was supposed to be five minutes long, but I got so into my presentation when I was doing my uh, degree that I uh, I spent 25 minutes doing the presentation, and everyone's jaws were dropping because it was like such an interesting presentation, but I just didn't know that I was talking for that length of time until the, the tutor was like, Dan, you have to stop talking. So when you talk uh, about something in general, people know like they should talk you know, a small, concise amount of information at a person, but people on the autism spectrum, if they're really into it, will just, bleh, they'll just throw everything out at them you know, in this conversation, which is really interesting. I can't remember the amount of times that like my, my mum or my girlfriend are always like, Dan, just stop talking about this stuff, you know, we've got to get on. Dinner's in like half an hour, we have reservations, man. Um, which is just so funny, I just love that. Okay, so number five is obsessive interest. Kind of goes along with the lengthy conversation because I guess you talk at length about your obsessive interest, but most people on the autism spectrum have an interest of subject that they completely absorb in themselves and they dive into that subject and they just love that subject. They, they like, you know, Know, it could be Tamagotchis or soft toys or like Fireman Sam or Thomas the Train. Like they could just obsess with that thing and love it so much that they collect all of the toys, all the memorabilia, all of the t-shirts, watch all of the DVDs, bought all of them, got the subscription service for that specific thing, you know, go to see the theme parks, know all the characters' names, obsess over it. It's called a special interest and that special interest makes them almost an, an expert in it because they're obsessed with it, you know? I mean, you'd be, if you were obsessed with something, there's no doubt you'd be, uh, you know, a, 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 an expert expert on that field. And that actually goes on to let me uh, tell you something that I actually have launched an autism membership website, which has monthly uh, coaching sessions with me. So if you want to kind of like a, a coaching session with me on a video chat in, in a group setting, you can do every single month. And there's also courses in there where you can learn about autism and stuff, uh, really, really good tactics for living daily life and stuff like that. And also PDF downloads and other kind of cool interviews with people who run like autism apps and stuff. Anyway, all that is available at levelupautism.net. It's available right now. So you can go and sign up on a monthly basis. It's so awesome. I'm super excited. I'd love to see you in there. If you think this video can help somebody, please share it on social media like Facebook and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.